Being a somewhat heavier rider myself, I completely understand how difficult it can be sometimes to find the ideal bike. On the one hand, you want something that's going to be stylish, good looking, fun and fast to ride. But then on the other hand, you don't want to be living in constant fear of it constantly folding underneath you like some cheap concertina. Plus, you don't want something that's going to break the bank either. Well, the good news is that such a bike does exist. It's called the Pinnacle Arcos One Gravel Bike. I'll start off by saying straight away that this video is not sponsored in any way, shape or form. I bought this bike here myself back about seven months ago. It cost me 800 pounds from my local Evans store. But uh, looking online yesterday, I understand that you can also buy it slightly cheaper from places like House of Fraser and Sports Direct. As you can see, it's a really good looking bike, but don't let the fact that it's called a gravel bike put you off. As the name suggests, it's going to be absolutely fantastic for riding those gravel trails, but it's equally as good out on the road. And in fact, that's where I spend about 99% of my time riding this bike. So you do kind of get the best of both worlds. As a heavier rider, one of the big concerns about cycling is the stress that you're putting the frame under. Now, carbon bikes may be nice and light, but the constant worry there is that it might snap in some sort of way. Luckily with this bike, that fear is reduced somewhat. It's got a 6061 heat treated alloy frame, so it's really, really robust. It's got carbon forks, so it's going to absorb quite a lot of the road chatter and it's just a really really strong frame the downside though is that it is a little bit on the heavy side but believe me you don't really feel it when you're actually cycling as a heavier rider though the single biggest problem i have is with the wheels i break spokes i break rims and i break hubs so it's a real test of a wheel strength if i can ride it for any length of time without anything untoward happening to it. As a general rule of thumb, a wheel is going to be much, much stronger if it's hand built and has a high spoke count. And although these wheels aren't hand built, they do have a high spoke count. On the back here, uh, this wheel has 32 spokes. Now I will admit that I did break a spoke recently, but that's only because uh, something has to give with the value of this bike. Like I say, this bike is 800 pounds um, and the components on it are absolutely fantastic. And one of the compromises that they've had to make is on the wheel construction. So this was made by uh, a machine and the tension in the spokes aren't uh, set correctly. And that's why I broke the spoke. But since I've done that, uh, I took it to my friend Steve up at Bike Fixers who fixed the wheels and he also sort of checked every single spoke by hand, both on the back and on the front, and they are now absolutely fantastic. And I have every confidence that these, these wheels are going to last me for quite a long time. The tires on this bike are WTB Resolute 42 mils. And again, being that little bit wider is also going to help with the strength of the wheel as the weight is just going to be that bit more distributed actually out on the road. You can also see that the tires are fairly knobbly, which is a bit more appropriate for a mountain bike. But again, this has no disadvantage as far as I can see when you're out on the road and the wheels roll just as fast as any road tire. If you are a heavier rider, you'll know that it starts to get a little bit tricky once you start to climb. And basically that's down to your power to weight ratio but this can be offset with a suitable gear ratio. And this bike has exactly that. It has Shimano Claris eight speed with a 48 and 32 tooth chainring set on the front. And then on the back, you have an 11 to 34 cassette, and that's going to give you a less than one to one gear ratio. To give you some idea of how well this bike climbs, last week, I was out in the French Pyrenees riding up the Col de Costuge, which is basically a 15 kilometer climb. When I rode this bike up it, I got to the top 
and I felt absolutely fantastic. It took me about an hour and 38 minutes. A couple of days later, I rode exactly the same climb on a lightweight carbon road bike with a slightly higher gear ratio. And basically, I couldn't really feel much of a difference on the climb. At the other end of the scale, us heavier riders take slightly longer to stop than our lighter counterparts. And with that in mind, this bike has some really effective cable disc brakes that have some real stopping power. A couple of really nice extras are things like the metallic blue paintwork, which I think looks absolutely fantastic. It's got a really comfortable WTB saddle and the handlebar tape, although a little bit kind of functional looking, is really, really comfortable. This bike is completely off the peg and exactly the same spec as you would buy from Evans. I've not made any modifications or upgrades apart from one thing, which is adding the SPD SL pedals. When you buy it, you get the flat pedals. And then of course, it's up to you whether you keep those or change them for your uh, preferred pedal system. All in all, I absolutely love this bike. I've been riding it for about seven months now and it has absolutely everything us heavier riders need. It's strong, it's comfortable, it's fast, it's good looking and it won't break the bank if you buy one. Another thing us heavier cyclists struggle with is finding suitable kit that's going to be big enough. And if you're looking for something like that, then I'll leave a link to my shop here in the description. Um, but in the meantime, if you'd like to watch uh, how I got on climbing up the Col de Costuge on this bike, then click on the video just here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.